Cosmo Babies. Dear Cosmo Babies, welcome back to part two of Building Your Set Kit. I'm your host, Annie MacArthur, and I have my wonderful guest with me, Alicia Dotson, and we are building a set kit. So if you are just listening for the first time, you are Coming into part two, I highly recommend going back and listening to part one, where we go over the basics of a set kit. And on this episode, we are diving a lot deeper into the unknowns of, did you know that you needed this? Because you (laughs) definitely do. (laughs) <laughs> and again, if if you're joining us for the first time, we are sharing a lot of imagery on this episode. So if you were streaming this podcast on Apple iTunes or Spotify or Amazon Music, I do recommend listening here, but also going and checking out the Hair Nerds YouTube page where you can actually see Alicia sharing the actual tools and items that she is talking about. So you can have a visual reference as well, because this episode is full of amazing aha moments and I I would also recommend grabbing a pen and paper and making a list because you are not going to want to miss these items if you are looking to build a set kit for yourself. So let's go ahead and just jump right into it. (laughs) Welcome back, (laughs) Alicia. Thank you for joining us again. I'm so glad you're here. (laughs) Thank you for having me again. So much fun. Yes. I am so excited. You guys, a shopping list, go ahead and have it. It is just I keep one. It's never in, like it's ever running that I just add things to it. Cause I find, don't you feel like you, Oh yeah. From the first time you did the set, like you're like, I've added more things, right? Like, yes. Yeah. It's constant. There are things that I just, I'm like, Oh, this is cute. I never knew I needed this. Exactly. That's, why not? Yes. Right? So, yeah. So Question I asked Alicia on part one of these this podcast episode is what was your first original set kit like? So now that we're diving a little bit deeper into set kits, what were some things that you like when you showed up on set for the very first time that you just were not prepared for or didn't have? Were there pieces that you were like, I didn't realize that this is something that I needed or you weren't able to create something because you didn't have something available? The thing I did not have. I will never forget it is the first set I was on. I didn't have a color brush and a bowl and we were doing a look and it was going to be a wet look. We were having to apply a lot of product onto the hair like gel and it needed Mm -hmm. to go on and create really smooth. So you couldn't just use your hands. So you could apply, add it to the hair, but the brush, it wanted to create this very definitive look. And the lead stylist was applying it with the color brush. And I don't think I have a color brush. I thought we were doing dry hair. I don't know what yeah. was going on here. Yeah. And so I ended up applying it and using like a paper to just do the <laughs> same motion. I it was a hot, I told you I was a hot mess then. But <laughs> it was it did get the job done. And then of course going back through and someone had mercy on me and I was able to use that. And use a brush as well. But that was one of the things that I never thought I would have added to the kit. And I ended up needing. That was my very first show. Mm -hmm. And ever since then, I just add those little things that I find would be a good, a really good thing. It's like, that would be good to still get a look. Like even a, a balayage board to have the product on like a spatula, like those little things. I have those in my kit now because you never know. I've had to use a balayage board or something like that. So yeah. It, yeah. 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 What about you? Like, did Oh you- my God. I was just thinking, I'm like, I think one of the things that I'm trying to remember, and it, it was a photo shoot. It was like a local photographer working on a a local model. And I was very lucky because I was trying so hard to get into set work. And so I felt really lucky and I showed up with all the things that I thought I was going to need. But again, like you, like we're working on dry hair, right? Or like we're working on things. And so it's like the bare minimum kind of basics of what you have to have. A small pair of either like cuticle scissors or like small Mm -hmm. scissors of some sort, not to cut hair with, but you don't know what, like, you might need to cut something. You might need to be cutting string or extensions or cutting extensions in half that I'm not wanting to use my actual really nice Mizutani scissors on, but 
something yes. else. And so having a pair of small, either cuticle or other type of eyebrow scissors, that is a must have. And that was <laughs> what I needed. And I remember I ended up having to use my Mizutani's and it like killed me inside. I can't even remember what it was that I had to cut, but I remember, I can remember the feeling of being <laughs> like, oh my God, this is the last thing I want to be using these shears on is uh-huh. whatever it was. <laughs> yes. Where you're just like, oh my God, my shears are screaming as I'm cutting this. Yes. Yes. So again, for anyone that's listening, this is part two of this episode. So just going over what we went in part one, we went over bags, we went over brushes, combs, products, some of the bigger, more uh, recognizable items that you would be putting in. This, we're going to be diving a lot more into the small, unknown forgotten things. So Alicia and I are going to be a little bit all over the place. Again, have your pencil and paper ready. Take the notes because you are going to want a color bowl and a, and a color brush because you're not probably applying color, but you are going to be using it for something. Get yourself a pair of really good cuticle or eyebrow scissors because also you may have to cut the the model's eyebrows if, if they're looking a mess. That is a very real thing also. Yeah. But speaking of scissors, let's talk about scissors too. Like how many scissors or shears or whatever you want to call them, how many do you think that you need to have in a set kit? I would definitely, I would definitely say that you should have a pair of shears and a pair of scissors. Those are two different things. So having <laughs> a pair of your shears and a pair, you just need a nice little five five or six inch like you don't need anything crazy Mm -hmm. and then you definitely want a pair of scissors and scissors are ones i'm grabbing mine scissors that you are okay cutting anything yep you can get these these are going to be not just your construction paper (laughs) scissors but like Ones that you could cut extensions, ones that you can cut Mm -hmm. a string, anything like that. You also do want like cuticle, like the little babies, but I like having these and then also having a pair of cuticle scissors or like small little babies and then having one pair of shears. You do not need a multitude of of shears, like hair Mm -hmm. shears. You don't need a multitude of those. I don't think you need, you just need something that's going to, but <laughs> cut yeah. well. Another thing that I actually add to my kit that I like, it's very bizarre, but it's a good one, is a razor. Yes. And this is going to be, this is actually an, ele- an electric one, like a hot razor. So it cuts and seals the cuticle as it's cutting. So it's a hot razor. You can use this for extensions. You could use this if you need to just Get rid of the hair really quickly. So I like a razor. So those are going to be the four things that you need. Mm-hmm. Pair of shears, scissors, razor, and cuticle scissors. Yeah. So if you have those, you are good to go. And depending on the set that you were working on, there's going to be a lot of context around it, but you may also want to have your full clipper set with you, your pair of clippers, plus all of your guards and those kind of things. But again, it depends. Not You were not always going to need those. There's a lot of context that goes around that, but it is good to have a very nice, high quality set of clippers plus uh, accessories to go with it, depending on if that is the particular style of hair being done. Yes, agreed. Clippers for sure is something. But one that you made me think about it, one that is regardless is a trimmer. A yes. little small mm-hmm. like a peanut baby. Like yeah. a little peanut. They're literally called peanuts. Yes. If Get yourself you need a peanut. A, <laughs> and a cordless one or a battery. I a have ba- that this same one is exact a, one. <laughs> that's amazing. So, when you said it, I was like, oh, this is what regardless of whether you won't always need clippers, but you will always want to have a clipper or a trimmer and a Mm -hmm. little baby one in your set. Because you may need, if you're working with wigs or if you're working with anything like that, you may need to create really sharp lines. And Mm -hmm. this is a good way to create that. If you're doing a really sharp, like you're working with wigs or you're working with something and you need a really sharp line, this gets it there really good. Yeah. And it's small. So yeah. um, it's also great if you're working on weddings, somebody might need their neck 
cleaned up or a model on set might need their neck cleaned up or something like that. So that is always really excellent to have. Even if you don't have a full clipper set with you, definitely get yourself a little peanut razor. Oh my God. It's that thing has come in handy more times than I've ever, ever. It is always (laughs) something I'm pulling out and I've been on a set one time where I was the only person that had a clipper set and trimmers. Mm -hmm. And so all the male, like all the barbered cuts came to me and because (laughs) no one else had a clipper set in their kit. So really knowing, and you don't need to get like the whole barber case. You just need something that just, you can interchange guards have some disinfectant with you because you'll be whipping through them. And Mm -hmm. yeah, I absolutely, if you have any questions about it, we got jumped right into it. You can always just DM me as well. It's at main seamstress and it main like this here and seamstress like sewing. So you can just DM me. I would be happy to just answer any questions you have, but Yes, that's one of the things. Yes. I'm also going to add in, if you are not following Alicia on Instagram, pause this episode right now. Go ahead and go open up your Instagram app. Go find her main seamstress. Hit that follow button. But if you click the link in her bio, you are also going to see an Amazon storefront available. And a lot of the things that we are talking about will be located in Alicia's Amazon storefront. So if you don't have your personal favorites, go check out the ones that are Alicia's personal favorites and the ones that she actually uses. And you can build your kit just like hers. So we're going to make it super easy for you. One thing I do want to talk about is in my personal set kit, I have a smaller kit in my kit. And in this smaller kit, I have a lot of my tiny pieces that can very easily be thrown all over your bag, your suitcase, your bag, your whatever you're working with. They can end up everywhere and it can become a big mess. So I have this great little plastic organizer and I keep all of my small items in there. So I would love to jump into talking about the small little items that are a must, must have in any set kit that you're building. Whether you are someone who is wanting to work on weddings, on photo shoots, on runway shows, on any kind of set available, you have to have these things. Yes, it's a must. Yeah, it's a so must. let's jump into those. I'm going to start off with elastics and bungees are yes. like my key. Clear elastics, oh. black elastics, and bungees of all colors. You can see the difference in the two if you're watching. These are like, this is if you have a ton of space. This is probably actually the size of the space you're working with. <laughs> that's, yep. that's about how <laughs> big of a size. Can you imagine if you set this down? So you need a small one as well. So in des- this, describe those for those who are just listening. For people who are just listening, for my audio people, you are looking for, this would be, what would I say? Like a, this is like a 10 by... 10 by 12, maybe. 12. Yeah, like a 10 by 12 organizer. Mm -hmm. And in this organizer, it has a ton of different compartments. You can customize them. You really want to find one. Think like a tackle box. I don't fish. Kudos to the people who do. But I love using them for hair. Yes. (laughs) So you can get a tackle box. And the tackle box type container, you can customize those compartments to make them what you want them to be. So I would get one of those and a smaller one. The smaller one is probably about three to four inches by five. Like yeah. it's small and it opens up and it's, it has everything you need. You can customize those compartments as well. So these are two that you want. I actually suggest keeping them, if you're doing runway or something, keeping the small one and then just replenishing. Most likely you're going to be traveling or being somewhere. So you'll have your clothes in a different kit or in a different space. So maybe you could have extras in your clothes and then just replenish. If you're going to be working on set for a week or a few days, 
you'll need to replenish it a little bit. For anyone that is like, where do I find one of these things to put in all of my tiny accessories? I would recommend going to hairbrained.pro and yes. they have toolboxes available. So not only the tools that you would need to put into your kit, but they actually have the boxes available as well. Something very similar. So if you're watching this episode right now on YouTube and saw what Alicia was holding up, unfortunately, I don't believe that brand is any longer available, which breaks my heart because it was one of the best. Mm -hmm. I personally have those two boxes myself, my favorite things, but I know that hairbrain.pro has different size kits available for all of your small accessories. They do. I actually have one of theirs for another, for my session kit. I have that. They just have, they are good for like just getting that kit and getting like combs and brushes like mm -hmm. you can get so many things on there so definitely grabbing that and it's the perfect size too so you yeah. are in good hands grab that one yep and with that you want to make sure that you're filling it with the things you need that way it doesn't fly all over the place i just love this versus bags Nobody wants to see pull out bags of bobby pins. Some of the things that I like in my little, let's go. You said bungees and I completely agree. Like bungees and for people who have never seen those, bungees are these little puppies. They come in all different colors of hair. You get, you can get a blonde, a brown and a black mm -hmm. and you can, I like them because the bungees, you can stretch them. To work like an elastic, but you can, for that hair that's really thick, you can really wrap it around and be able to have, or looping through, you can do so many different things. Yep. These are great and they yes. don't break too. And what a bungee is basically a hair tie, an elastic hair tie with a fabric outside so the hair won't get stuck or broken or anything like that, but it's just a single length. So it's not rounded. It's one line and on each end of that bungee is a hook and you can do all kinds of things with it bungees are highly essential when working on set they are used for a multitude of things and i cannot recommend having all of the bungees in all of the colors yes and another of them <laughs> thing that is a good thing to have just in case because you may be working on a set where they don't mind the bungees or you may have someone who's okay we need to be able to be a little that hook for instance the metal hook there maybe a mm -hmm. little bit harder for them to deal with so making sure you have some elastic just elastic because you could do the same thing and tie knots like you can create it's the same concept without the metal hooks on the end as well yeah this you it's never ending so you could go if you're wanting to have a ponytail to send straight up or if you're wanting to like turn it into using like wire, something like that, you can have a little bit more fun because you have more to work with here. Mm -hmm. You can just wrap as much as you want. Yep. And it basically looks like a roll of ribbon. So it's a, yes. a never-ending piece of elastic that is going to be super long. You can cut it down to whatever size that you need and be able to use that. Where can you find that? On Alicia's link in bio in her Amazon storefront. <laughs> so if you're not sure, go there and check it out. <laughs> yes. And they have these in all different... The spools, that they have them in all different colors. They have them in natural hair shades. They have them in fashion shades, all the things. So you want to have a spool of that, maybe not even doing a spool because once again, space. So just taking a nice amount of this and having it available to you. So taking some of this off of the spool and putting it into a nice little bag that you can carry with you. Yeah. That's going to be one that you would have. And then of course you want to have like your rubber bands and clear Yep. Like you want to have those. And these are just, I'm doing like just bigger rubber bands. They have small ones as well. But I like to have just the color, like a clear and a dark. Yeah. You would be good with that. The smaller um, ones I always found tend to break really easily. And so yeah. I end up throwing away too many of them, where if you yeah. get the larger size of the clear or black tiny elastics, you tend to have a better chance of them not breaking on you. Yes, I agree. Because the tiny ones, they are just, 
you're never really going to use them. You, the only time you're going to use them is probably if you're braiding and they want to secure a braid, but you could also use your elastic, your spool of elastic and tie it around and use it as thread. Mm-hmm. So you don't always need these, but you can have a couple of them. You never know. Yeah. And then going with a few of those different colors, all the elastics, all the rubber bands, I want to say those are the only ones that I would use as far as elastics and bungees mm-hmm. and rubber bands are concerned. I don't think you need much more than that. Yeah. Um, but speaking of thread, though, definitely having with you black, brown, kid. and a blonde color thread with a needle. Yes. And it is very specific. We're not going to Joanne's Fabrics and just buying some needles and thread here. Like it is very no. specific hair thread. And typically rounded needles are used a lot of yes. the times. And so having a couple of those on hands, because sometimes specific looks will need you to use utilize those things. Yes. And also you may need to, someone may have extensions and you may need to tighten them up or mm-hmm. you may need to move an extension in in one of the models like you may need to add an extension so you want to be able to do that so having hair thread and a needle a hook needle that's Mm -hmm. really good you can find those kits you can also build it and then just have one straight round it and then also a nice hook you're good to go and i think that's all you need that's a good start for what you need as far as um elastics and things like that definitely so let's jump into pins because pins pins are a lot (laughs) we might have to talk about pins for a hot second yeah there are a lot of different types of pins also called bobbies bobby pins there are so many different kinds a lot of times i have personally found that people that i have worked with tend to lean towards specific types of pins or bobbies and that's what they're comfortable using but there are a there are a huge variety of bobby pins out there there are french pins wig pins bobby pins straight bobby pins curved bobby yes (laughs) they come in all kinds of colors all kinds of lengths yes i have all different ones so we're gonna drop into them so bob pins versus Let's just go with that. Let's start with a bob pin versus a hairpin. So a bob pin versus a hairpin. Hairpin is going to be open. It is a U-shape, and you see some have the ridges. You also are going to have some that are just your standard. These are a little bit more sturdy, and they have a few more ridges to them, if you can see. But yep. still, this is going to be a hairpin. This is, and they also come in different sizes. You can see those are like, yeah, small. They also come in different thicknesses. Big. Yes, all different. You can <laughs> definitely build upon it. But these are going to be hairpins. Bob pins you're using when you're wanting to secure the hair down. Mm-hmm. It's also they have different kinds where they're curved. I do have curved ones as well. A curve is just going to follow the shape of the head. This is going to be more of a curved bob pin, but it's just going to curve to the head. And they come in different colors, blondes, browns, blacks. And also, there are some bob pins that don't have the ridges on the top area, too, if you want more Mm -hmm. of a smooth finish. So you have all different kinds. I also like and highly recommend... Let's pull this. I'm looking at my big one, but let's go with the small one. My small one, I make sure that I have some hair pins. I have bob pins in here as well. I usually will keep a brown and a black. And with the brown, I may put a couple of the blondes. Those are rare. You don't want to not have them. But you can always, the browns, you could always work with easy. You're going to run into that more than with the blondes. And then I also make sure that I have these small baby. They're like the one inch bob Mm -hmm. pins. These are great. I find that I use these a lot more than just regular bob pins because they're so invisible. So I like using those as well. And those come in different sizes too, or different colors as well. So I make sure that I fill up there 
Mm-hmm. And I also have my elastics on the side as well. I usually will keep a hairnet or two. And a hairnet is like those nice little, the lunch ladies, yes. the hairnet that you put on the hair. They are so small that you can put them into one of the little compartments and they come in black. They come in brand, They come in brown and they also come in blonde. You can mm-hmm. put those. And that way you'll have some because you may need to curl and then let the hair set Mm -hmm. and you could put those on. So I make sure that I keep that in my kit as well. Yeah. So I'll have those. They also are super nice if you're trying to create something structural or very shape specific and you're like you're having curled. The hairnets are really wonderful because they are super invisible, but you can also use the hairpins to help set and secure and shape things. And so you can get really cool shapes in the hair with the hairnets and that'll add texture and volume and like shapes that you just can't create otherwise. So those are definitely like, I would keep a handful of hairnets in your kit all the time. Those are the ones that I would keep in there. Hairpins. I particularly like working with the ones with the ridges. I like these. They just are, I could do more. I could twist them. I could really contort them a little bit more. You'll find a preference. Usually if you're working with on a hair team and there's a lead stylist, they may have a specific one that they want to use for a look. So making sure that you have a few different ones is great. Yeah. It makes their job easier. So, so look into all the different types of bobby pins, hair pins, French pins, setting pins. Like there are so many different names for them, but there are a variety. Definitely learn the differences and the uses for each type of pin and have plenty in your kit. I was just thinking it can be a clip and it also can be a pin is the wig combs, like the yeah. ones that are like for clip-ins. Mm-hmm. Those are great. <laughs> yes. Agreed. So having those, it works out good because you may need to attach it to an extension, throw it onto an extension you're working with. So making yeah. sure you have those. Let's talk about clips. One of the things, of course, you think about all the different like duckbill clips and all the, the things that we would know to have in there. But some of the clips that I like to make sure that I have are wig clips, like clip in extensions, like mm-hmm. this one, because it's a clip because you can sew this onto the hair. And also for extensions, you may need to make an extension piece. Like you have a hair weft and you need to add it to it. Or one is broken and you need to add on there. So you want to make sure you have a few of those. And they come black. Every color. Yeah. Every color. Every color. So definitely having those, making sure you have some extensions are great. Different textures are great. Mm -hmm. I would say just... And you could keep long, like a good standard length maybe a few long pieces and you could always cut those. So that's one of the reasons I would keep extensions in my kit as well. You never know when you need it or braiding hair, like canacle on hair. You never know when you need it. Just add a, like a little bit, have an extension bag. If usually you will know the call sheet will call for you're going to be doing something dealing with extension. So you'll usually know that. Ahead the of other thing too, with those wig clips specifically is if there are hair accessories that are needing to be used and it's difficult because sometimes models can have really thin, fine hair and then the accessories when attached to it, those are really great to attach the hair yes. to the accessory as well. So that's going to be one. And then of course, like duck bill clips, but setting clip, like when you're, you want to have these guys, mm-hmm. a single And a prong. variety of sizes of duckbill. Because yes. if you're doing like a proper iron set, you're going to want smaller duckbill clips. Or if depending on what it is that you're doing, you might want the longer duckbill clips. Yes. Um, or the duckbill clips that have the, what's the name? Like the plastic piece, the protective you want the, piece on it. Yes. Like... You want to have a few different ones. Now, this one, if you can't, for my guys that are listening, this is just going to be a single prong clip with a plastic, almost looks like a guitar pick that is attached to it. And mm-hmm. what that does is helps 
eliminate creases. So if you're, and they have these in all different sizes, like they have a short one, you could get long, um, longer pieces attached mm-hmm. to it. You can make your own. Mm-hmm. You could also, because they have longer, like single prong clips that are a little bit longer. So you could create your own if you want. Yeah. Um, if you don't want to do all of that and you want to keep it simple, Another reason that I loved my comb set, going back, if you did not listen to the first part, if you missed this, go back. But it has a card. I have a card in there. I also highly recommend having a card because you could use this with the clip and you've created your own. So making sure that you have cards, playing cards, yeah, anything business like cards, that. playing cards, anything that's going to have a bit of a heavier structure to it, yes. thicker than a standard sheet of paper. You're going to want something with a little bit of heft. Nice card stock some, of some mm-hmm. sort. That's going to be something you'd want. And then just making sure that you have a lot of different size set clips are going to be great for you when you're working and doing and having enough of them. Because mm-hmm. when you're doing a style, you don't want to run out of them. Yeah. Um, So definitely making sure you have those are also great when you're doing a blowout and you're using rollers because I do have a roller set in my kit as well. So and all different sizes. Mm -hmm. Are they Velcro? These are Velcro rollers and I make sure that I keep duck bills with them. So those are all different sizes, all the way up to, I believe these are up to three inches, like a two and a half inch mm-hmm. down to small. So when you're doing setting hair into place, this is great to have. Yeah. And you need duck bill clips for those. Even I, with the Velcro, I think that is something I personally learned the hard way was like, oh, it's Velcro. No, you have to have the duck bill clips to hang on, even with so, the Velcro. I would say those, as far as clips go, those are some of the, that's pretty straightforward and having a nice amount of them enough to do a full head and yeah. a few extras. Yeah. That's what I would say. Um, that should be good. To, that should make mm-hmm. you good to go. Yeah. In my kit, I always kept a lot of duckbill clips because in some situations, um, let's say you're doing a wedding party, for example, you may be setting one bridesmaid's hair and then you're moving on to the next one while one is setting and cooling. And so you may be working on multiple models or people at the same time. And so having enough of those duckbill clips is super important because you're going to need enough to make sure that you can do multiple people because it is typically very chaotic on a set and it is you were never not busy. You were always going and moving and doing something so absolutely making sure there's no downtime tools you also want to make sure you have a portable dryer like a fitted so this thing is like a hooded dryer like a cap a heated cap so they have all different sizes and they also have one where you can use your blow dryer and it would blow and heat the head as well yeah packing this is collapsible i love this thing it came in handy it's something i added to my kit as I was doing set work. So this is going to be more like set work, not necessarily for runway shows. Yeah. You're using this more when you're doing magazine shoots, test shoots, things like that. Mm -hmm. This came in handy for that because you're setting the hair to last all day. Yes. Or all throughout the shoot. So Mm -hmm. this is going to be great for that. That was something that I loved adding to my kit. It was great. And if you're curious um, on where to find that, you're going to find it in Alicia's Amazon storefront. So yeah. go to her Instagram, hit the <laughs> link in bio. You're going to get taken right to her Amazon storefront and you're going to find all of these little fun goodies right there. I would also say if you don't have not only the rollers, but these little, another thing are lacers. So these look like they're like a styrofoam circle almost bracelet size maybe a little bit bigger but they're flexible so think like a flexi rod these are great and you would take the hair if you're wanting to make more of a spirally like section and Mm -hmm. then just pin it in place that's what you're going to use and it would create more of a spiral or 
you could do infinity. You could have a little bit more creativity with these guys. So if you're and if you're not watching, you can see that you can flex them going from a circle to flat. And I love them because I could use them just to do spiral. I could use a spiral curl. If I'm wanting to do an infinity curl, like I'm wanting to do a figure eight, I can have mm-hmm. a little bit more flexibility with these. No pun intended. <laughs> I could do a little of everything with them. So I got these, a set of these and love them. I would, you could probably also make this as well. So you really just want something that's going to be flexible and movable. So I love these for another type of curling. <laughs> I keep thinking, oh my gosh, like thinking back to my set kit in the very beginning and having some of these like embarrassing, like cringe moments. Of, I can't believe I did that. Uh-huh. Like, What are some of the weird things that you have in your kit now? Because I have some weird stuff. What's your I weird have- stuff? <laughs> So my weird things that I have, I do have my little like toothbrush comb spatula situation. I have yes. one of these. I absolutely love it. It's it like an eyebrow so brush. Yes. Yeah. I have that. And I got one that also has the spatula on there. So it works. It's like triple duty. It's so, like I multi-use. love that multi-use <laughs> because mine are all separate. <laughs> yes. This is great. So I love this and I keep about four of these in my kit because they have legs. So you want to make sure you have that. Another one, weirdly enough, that I have is I do have chopsticks in my kit as well. And I have different size chopsticks. This was like just different ones. These work out great for grabbing if I'm trying to create a French twist. I use this to really tuck the hair in and grab all the hair together. Mm-hmm. It's a great tool. Um, also sectioning, you could pin hair away. You could use them as sectioning clips. I love these. So that's another weird thing that I have in my kit. I have mascara one. I have a whole package of them. Do yourself a favor. Buy the the (laughs) jumbo Costco size thing of mascara wands. You will go through them so much faster than you think. Actually, a lot of makeup stuff I have in my kit for hair. Like the sponges, like those sponges. Mm -hmm. I have that. Get a pack of those because you may need to put like some color to the hair or you may need to like you may be doing all kinds of creating shapes you can use those little triangles to create shapes you never know what the look is going to call for i have some really fluffy makeup brushes that i keep in case you need to powder the part line or anything like that or if something's too shiny and you need to add a little bit of matte to it or something i keep a couple big fluffy makeup brushes in mine too. I also keep random pieces and textures of hair. I do braiding hair, clipping yeah. hair, random hair and, and feathers. padding. Cause yeah, feathers. You and can feathers. Keep yeah. Like I also keep these guys like hair, but when you have, you could use braiding hair and create padding in place of these. Mm-hmm. Cause these, you have to cut these up and oh, make yeah. them into something. Whereas with, hair you could just pack it in and yeah hair and you just be able to do and i'm gonna give everyone a real quick cheat on how you can make a quick pad so alicia just said if you have braiding hair available you're gonna take that hair net that you have a whole bunch of and you're gonna put that braiding hair inside of that hair net and you're gonna roll that sucker up into the shape that you need because shapes matter when you're yes. working with pads and you're gonna roll yes. it up and all of a sudden you have this beautiful pad in whatever shape that you need and guess what you can undo it and you can use it again later boom that is the key is <laughs> And what did you use? Not a lot of space because you yes. already had it in your kit. It's <laughs> cocktailing. Yes. It is cocktailing. So that is the reason you have these random little MacGyver things in because you never know when you need to create something. Another thing that I randomly have too is like the, of course, jewelry making stuff like wire, like the wire or <laughs> the like fishing line. I know you never know if you need that stuff. Yeah. I've also have a 
Oh, the land, the topsy turvy, the little loop. So it is yeah. like to create the loop, like you would for my people who ever played with like little hair things, like as far as topsy turvies and creating that nice little. What did we call that thing? Like, I know. Uh, I'm like, okay. So for anyone who is listening, <laughs> that was not born in the, like Alicia yes. and I were. If you were 2000 baby, you probably don't really remember this because this you was something from know. our childhood. But it is a piece, a piece of plastic that is, I don't know, six inches long. And on the end of it is a loop. So it almost looks like a big plastic lollipop that is hollow in the middle of this loop. And you could put the hair through the loop and use the long plastic part to flip it around and make yes. it all. Yes, I was trying to get to my <laughs> part of it. I've unpacked my entire kit because I want to be able to show it to you. But guys, just DM me. I will send you a picture of it. <laughs> it's on my, it is in like Lincoln bio. You will be able to see that over yes. in my storefront under the random must-haves yes. in your kit. It is absolutely something that is great to have because you never... No, I'm not even kidding. <laughs> it, yes, it, it's so useful. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I feel like I need to go fly to my mom's house right now. Go open yeah. her bathroom drawer and see if mine from my childhood is still in there somewhere. <laughs> I'm pretty sure mine is still in my mom's drawer. <laughs> still there. That is definitely, oh uh, God, that's something that you do need. You didn't think you needed it, but, but you, you do. do. You will use it. Yeah. And towels. Yes. Have your towels. own towels. Towels are really yeah. great. The absorbent, absorbent towels. Yeah. You never know. Like some random things I always had in mind were Q tips, Kleenex. I always carry with me two capes. But I yeah. always really liked the makeup capes, like the shorty capes and not the full length capes. The ones I keep. Yeah. yeah. The, the shorty ones are really nice, which again is another makeup artist tool that I have in my hair kit. Gosh, Q tips, Kleenex, because Kleenex is always one or deodorant. You will, yeah. that sounds so stupid, but trust me, keep a thing of like fragrance free deodorant because yes. that has multiple uses to it. Plus, the model might need it <laughs> you, never, you know. never know but it also because it's the anti-press sprint like it it can absorb something very quickly you may need yeah. to use it to just like mattify something yeah i know dry your sheets <laughs> dry your sheets dry your sheets they're anti-static yes anti-static yes. sprays can be really expensive or you can put four or five dryer sheets in a little plastic bag and put that in your kit and spend um, very pennies on the dollar <laughs> yes safety pins I yes, of all have, sizes. Safety yes. pins of all sizes. Double sided tape. I keep double sided tape in as well because you never mm -hmm. know with that. Yes. And then something I want to say about that though is for people listening that are thinking, like, why in the world would I need this stuff? Wouldn't a stylist have these things or shouldn't the model have these things? Some situations, which I have been on sets where it is me, the model, and the photographer. The model brought all her own clothes and the model doesn't always know if something broke or she might have forgotten something. So at a lot of times that I have personally found that I end up becoming stylist, hairdresser. Sometimes I even help the photographer, like making sure things are are the way that they're supposed to be. And it's not just the hair, it's the face, it's the the makeup, it's the the clothing, it's making sure that no tags are hanging out. You can tend to play jack of all trades on a set. So it's really good to have these extra items with you. And especially even with a runway, you may like the designer and the designer's assistant may be busy handling emergency. handling something an emergency like you yeah. they may have had a wardrobe malfunction and they're busy and so the lead hair stylist is the one that's right there at the runway before they walk and if you have some they need something like that really quick or the they look at the change the model just changed from pants to now they're wearing a, a skirt or now they're wearing like something just the top or they're wearing shorts or it's a bikini whatever mm -hmm. 
they may need to do something really quick and you are right there and the designer or the designer's assistant, the wardrobe style is not there. So you're able to really have that available. Another random thing that I do have too in my kit that made me think about it is I do keep a razor. <laughs> yeah. On yeah. that you never know with that as well. But I do keep a razor because you may just need to like something or some area you just want to get to that really quick or somebody mm-hmm. may need to step away. That's going to happen probably more so in a shoot setting versus runway. If it's a shoot, you may, the model may have showed up and, oh my God, this look is different or I'm wearing something different than the whatever. Or cyber, yeah. if you're doing a wig and they, yes. use, they want those gone or they have a little bit of fuzz on their mm-hmm. hairline, their hairline is lower, something like that. It's um, all about the look. It's all about the overall look. <laughs> yes. Something else that I have is I always keep a bottle of clear nail polish and mm. I always keep mm-hmm. a small thing of hand lotion. And I like having hand lotion specifically. It's a little bit thicker. Usually it has silicone in it. So you're going to get a little bit of a shine from it as well. But sometimes models will come in and hands matter in a photo shoot or on a runway set. And if their hands don't always look good, sometimes you got to throw a bit of clear, get that hand lotion on there, get their hands looking nice and moisturized. And having the hand cream specifically with the a silicone base or a glycerin base to it is going to give them a faster moisturized look quicker than if they needed to actually look like they were hydrated or something. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I I have hand cream and I also do a little small thing of a shea butter or shea cream just to have the different mm-hmm. options because the same thing go for legs or anything yeah. like that. Or maybe just if it's all like the decollete, like that area. If they're like your model is showcasing or they need to showcase their chest, whatever. Like you want to be able to have like right there. So thinking about those, think about things, these things that are going to happen that you're like, okay, we need something to map this out really quickly. Yeah. Also, I do a mattifying primer. (laughs) I know this is random, but a mattifying primer I keep in my kit because it's great. It's great for people's Skin, especially if they're sensitive, it doesn't matter. They can mm-hmm. use it. If you are still in some way have baby powder in your bag, I highly recommend you throw it away and get like a mattifying primer. <laughs> it's a lot better on the skin. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Please just throw that away. Step away from it. Throw it away. The environmental thank you. So, yes. <laughs> so oh my gosh. That's... Something that I just uh, remembered as we're like talking about this is I was on set one time and it was a swimsuit shoot and there was a makeup artist on there, but because I keep extra big fluffy makeup brushes with me, the model came in and she had just gone and done like some outdoorsy type things and she had bruises all over her legs. And so the makeup artist was trying to quickly cover all of these things. But because I had additional brushes, I was able to jump in and help Mm -hmm. cover up those bruises because on set time is money. And if you are able to save time, they are going to remember you in the future because they are going to be like, that person made it so that we didn't have to spend extra time and money on this set. And they were able to get that job done super fast. And so having these little extra things are really important because you could be the one to make or break uh, a big photo shoot or a small photo shoot. Absolutely. I kind of feel like uh, there's so many other things, but I think those are the like weird and quirky things that I yeah. have. But For the most part, I... Oh, another one that I do have. I just thought about it. Another thing that I have, this is random, but I keep them, is like a wig. Yes. Oh, my God. Mm -hmm. For people who are not able to see me, (laughs) it is a... I am loving this right now. (laughs) With the Velcro, it's giving me very 20s vibes. But what it does is it lays down edges. So it's a strip of elastic with the Velcro attached and it stretches. And I, u- I didn't use it for myself at home. I have a, you can get this in a pack. You'll find it on my Amazon storefront, but it stretches. So you can use this 
And it is just great for being able to set and lay down something if you mold it a shape. Yes. I love using this. It is so awesome. It is a must have. I keep them in all of my kits now. Yeah. And they're great for it. So you could use these. You could also use just the wrap strip. Mm -hmm. Those are disposable because then you can just throw them away at the end. Those are great. So those are the other little quirky things that I've added over over Something time. else that is really great to keep in your kit on part one of our set kit episode, we talked about having a like a an extension cord or a uh, oh my gosh, what are those power called? Sword. A power strip. Power oh my goodness. <laughs> So having a power strip that does have a surge protector in it, but an ex- with an extension cord attached to it, because you never know where you're going to be working. But something that is really excellent in addition to that power strip is having a uh, Android cord, an iPhone cord, having additional charging options because the model may not have brought it. Your phone might be getting low, but something that is important is making sure that your personal phone is charged the whole time because you may come on set and you may have gotten a call sheet with a set of looks that were there and you might show up and the photographer is going to look at you and say, nope, I want this. And you might not know what that is. And so you might need to excuse yourself to the bathroom really quickly and go look it up on YouTube and see what they're talking about or how to create that really fast. And if you're in a position that maybe you just had a GPS an hour away and your phone battery died, like you were going to want to make sure that your phone is charged in case of an emergency on that level of needing to go look at how to do something, how to create something. You might also need to keep the model entertained because you don't know what kind of model you're working with. You might be on set with children. Children. And it's maybe they don't yep. have something, they're getting wiggly, and you might need to just throw on YouTube or, or a little something for them to pay attention to. And making sure that your items are charged is going to be really important. But also having a cord available in case the model's phone is not charged or somebody for else's sure. phone is not charged. Again, you're putting yourself in that position of I'm here and ready for everything. And having a little portable light or like a little small like a book portable light. light. Yes, yeah. those are good too. A light is great because when you're behind, uh, this is specific to like runway, when you are getting ready before the models get ready to walk, like those selfie lights, they work great for being able to, because it's dark back there. It is so, so dark backstage. You can show and you're able to have a light right there if they mm-hmm. need to see how the hair is looking yeah. Or see how the makeup is looking, the makeup artist, because usually there's going to be some a hair person. You may be that person. And then there's also going to be a makeup person there just mm-hmm. to make sure final look before they walk. And having a light on you would be great. And a light on different settings, not one that just immediately go, goes to yeah. one. You want to have different settings as well. Warm, mm-hmm. you want cool, you want different brightness as well yeah so that that way you can have something that works really easily a great rule of thumb is getting one that's rechargeable it's just easy because then you get to charge that up versus Mm -hmm. battery operated it's so much easier that's a good one to have that's one that i keep in all of my kits as well definitely and then also Yes, business cards. Business cards. <laughs> you have to, because people are going to be like, what, who are you? I want to connect. To leave it with you. You can give the business card to the photographer. In this day and age too, you can definitely connect through social, but having a physical card, some people still like cards. Yes, oh, I am a big fan of, I have something, there are different brands out there. This is just the particular one that I actually have myself. It's called a Popple. This actually goes on the back of my phone and you could touch another, I either an iPhone or a smartphone, hold it to this. And this actually is a digital business card. I just don't have it on my phone because I recently got a new phone. But these are really excellent to have if you are more of a digital person. But the wonderful thing about paper business cards is that, like we were saying before, you can use them as a way to not crease the hair. And so you get a two for one out of it. But business cards, super important. Yes, super important. And having that information whether it's digital or it's on paper, having that 
current to who you are, mm. your handle, having those things. If you work with an agency, having your agency there, like all of that stuff. So that way the photographer is able to know, get a hold of you, trade media. They know who you are. They yep. also with designers, all of them, everybody that's a part of this event will know how to connect with you and yeah. vice versa. Something that was always stood out to me was when I was doing weddings specifically, which I do not do weddings anymore. I only work on photo shoots now, but when I was doing a lot of weddings and bridal, I was assisting a, a lady for a long time. And what she would do is she would have a stack of business cards. And when she set up her area, so she'd put her towel down and set her whole thing up, she would put her stack of business cards at the top of it because people were constantly coming in the room, the photographers, other, the mother-in-law, the mother of the bride, the bridesmaids, everyone was like coming into the room all the time. And people would come in and without having to say anything, they already saw her business cards sitting there and they would just be able to take them and nobody had to say anything. And that was a way for her to get word of mouth out basically was, it was a little stack of referral programs, if you will. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They, they come in handy. They really do. And you'd be surprised because you're thinking, okay, we're all just going to be working together for however long. And then we leave and go our separate ways. But you may want to, they may want you to come back. That's the goal too, is you want to work with them again. So Mm -hmm. You want to have a way, you want to know like how to get a hold of you. So making sure of that as well. Absolutely. Yeah. So I feel like that's a nice amount of all the little. This randos. is a great start. I'm like, for anyone who's <laughs> listening and literally is just, yes, I'm writing every single thing down. And if you took every single thing that we <laughs> gave you and built an entire kit, you would be so set. You would literally be the most yes. prepared person. <laughs> Yes, you will. And you would look yes. so professional, especially look at the little Cosmo babies. If you're a little Cosmo yes. baby right now, you're still in school, you're still learning, figuring it out, but <laughs> there are some opportunities knocking at your door and you showed up with every single thing, which is a lot of money and I don't fault you if you can't do it, but you would be looked at on a completely different level because if a student showed up to set looking like that, I would be like, where the hell did you come from? Like, exactly. And you would be most I, prepared. And I will probably I work to. with you again. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I would. I think for anybody who is wanting to get into this, what would I say to you? And you're building your kit and you're looking at this shopping list that you just wrote down as we were talking <laughs> and you're like, oh my God, where do I start? First, take a deep breath. Yes. It's all good. Yes. You are... You don't have to go out and get every single thing immediately, no. but definitely build and add to what you have. So making sure you'd rather have the base and foundational things and have really quality ones than to go out and consume, get all of it. And it's just subpar. Mm -hmm. So make sure you do that. Get your brushes, get your combs. You have some irons probably already. You could use those. Just add to it and really think like this is an investment and you're going in a bit like you're adding to this to evolve into something else. So think along those lines. It took me, this is years of adding to something that I now can give you a list. So I was right where you were and <laughs> here we are now. So I think you are just, I'm super proud of you guys for actually taking the time to just make the list and decide you want to do that. So kudos to you. Yay. Yes. And please reach out at Main Seamstress if you ever have any thoughts or questions about, oh my God, I'm getting ready to do my first set. I need a pep talk or I need, give me some good words or what do I do? I would gladly be able to talk. I, I would love to. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And thank you, Alicia, for joining us. This was such a fun episode. I have been looking so forward to this. So <laughs> I am so excited. And thank you for everyone. If you have listened to part one and part two, let us know your thoughts. Leave a comment, slide into our DMs at the Hair Nerds or at Scissor and Moss Social. We want to hear from you. We want to know what you want to know in the future. Yeah. Dear Cosmo Babies, you are what keep us going every single day. And we love you so much. And 
we will see everybody next time. See you guys later. Bye.